happy Friday, everyone. Welcome to Wake Up Legendary. I am the pleasure of being your host again this morning. My name is Joanne. I am the Director of Marketing and Live Training here with Legendary Marketer. And I just got off of launching Decade in a Day, so I am pretty fired up right now. And I'm hopping over here and get to sit down and chat with a pretty darn cool person. I was reading her questionnaire and I am pumped to hear her story, hear her background and share that all with all of you as well. So before I bring Brittany on, let's do a few housekeeping items. If you are brand new to watching the show and would like a text reminder every morning of when we go live. All you need to do is text the letters WUL to 813-296-8553. Don't add anything else in there, otherwise it won't enroll you. Just keep it simple, WUL to 813-296-8553. And of course, if you want to throw your own hat down when our guests share their gold nuggets of wisdom, advice, strategy, and all of that good stuff, you can head over to belegendary.shop and grab all of the legendary swag, t-shirts, hats, towels, even phone cases are over in there um, that you, your heart desires. All right. So good morning. I'm seeing everybody come in. I'm loving the comments. Good morning, Kathy. All of that good stuff. Good morning, Mandy, Dave, Natalie. All right, let's bring her on. She is a former police officer, firefighter. Um, she's done a lot of CrossFit competitions, I believe, in the past and looking to get back into it. But we'll ask her if I have all of this right. So welcome. Brittany to the stage. <laughs> Good morning, Brittany. Good morning. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you doing today? Great. Thanks. Happy to be here. Awesome. So you've done a lot in your past. Yes. Yes. A little but bit. I have. Yes. Um, so let's, let's start. The, give us your, your backstory, your origin story before you even found Legendary and launched your business. What were you doing in the back in the past? So I did. I started as a firefighter right out of high school um, and did that for, gosh, over five years, um, mm -hmm. kind of switched fields and went into law enforcement um, mm -hmm. and did that for a couple of years and, you know, decided to start a family. Um, I have three children, so I have um, a little almost four-year-old girl. And I just had, well, not just, I have twin babies. They just turned a year, a boy and a girl. Okay. Okay. Um, and we moved uh, to Idaho and just wanted to start a family out here. Um, and, you know, I loved being a first responder. It's, mm -hmm. you know, such a honorable, you know, career. And I just love everything about, about it. Um, that's, you know, all I know, to be honest, um, I was looking out here to, you know, be a police officer again, but just hard to leave your babies. And mm -hmm. so while, you know, applying and, you know, figuring out if that's what I wanted to do, I, you know, was diving in to see how I could make money at home and just stay at home with them. So, and that's when I found legendary. Wow. I love that story actually. And Thank you for everything you've done. And first responders are such an important part of our, our life and, and such huge roles and make huge sacrifices. Um, so I could understand the conflict of wanting something, but also wanting to be able to be home because you definitely can't be home so much um, mm -hmm. with that schedule for sure. Yeah. Um, so did you see something about digital marketing and were you in right away or were you watching? How did that process go before you even decided to take the challenge? So, I mean, I was just like so many people out there scrolling every night, you know, on Instagram. And I kept coming across just people that were saying how much money they've made from home and then they're retired. And I'm like, how is this possible? And like so many people I know, I was 
very skeptical and I was, you know, this has to be a scam. Like there's no possible way there's people making this much money. And, you know, it, that just kept happening and kept happening. And one day I was on the bike in the morning and I came across it again. And I'm like, you know what? I'm going to try it. Like, what, what do I have to lose? Mm -hmm. So I clicked it. I started the 15 day course and I just, I dove right in. I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to, I'm just going to do this. And I did. I, I mean, I, I put my head down and I completed that. And I was like, this is amazing. And just kept, you know, checking away and launched, you know, my, a new Instagram and, you know, created all the funnels and from the blueprints and yeah, yeah. I'm here. I am. Wow. I love it. What did you think? What, what did you love the most when you were going through the challenge? Um, I mean, the amount of information in a $7 course is insane. Like it's, mm -hmm. it was, it was amazing. And then the fact that you have an advisor that's walking you through everything there to answer questions. Um, and that there's the groups that you can lean on. And, you know, I'm, I was still following, you know, everybody I looked up to on social media that I, I came across. So all of that and just teaching you so much in, in 15 days. Yeah, definitely. So when did you first take the challenge? It was the beginning of October. Okay. So not, not, not too long, but we've had time to let it, let it go and, and, and start and actually get launched. What was, did you have, I mean, I always feel like firefighter, police officer, CrossFit competitions, competitor, like you don't have fear. Did you experience fear with going on social media, launching your own business in this way? Because it was something that's very different from what you were used to. I mean, yes, I was definitely nervous. I'm not like I wasn't the posting on social media every day type of person. I didn't do reels. So it was very new to me and definitely out of my my normal from, you know, firefighting and whatnot. So I was nervous to dive into putting myself out there and not being embarrassed or, you know, worrying about what people mm -hmm. thought of me. But once I got a few down, I mean, I kind of was just like, why I shouldn't care. And just, you know, this is what I want to do. And I want to get the message out to people and no. Yeah. Wow. Very cool. Where did you, was your partner supportive? Very. Yes. Yes. Okay. Well, that's good. So yeah. you didn't, did you, did you tell friends and family? Did they, did you get any pushback or did you keep it kind of on the down low? I kept it on the down low. I, I mean, I told a couple, like a couple friends mm -hmm. um, and like my mom, but other than that, I'm, you know, they say just to, that's why we start a new social media and just mm -hmm. to do your own thing and not get discouraged by what people have to say. Um, you know, as I grow, more people know in my, you know, in my neighborhood or, or whatnot, which, and then I'm happy to talk to them about it. Um, but yeah, I mean, everybody was very supportive. Awesome. I love that. What a great way. I mean, not everyone has that, that, that going on. So mm -hmm. understand, but you still kept that boundary. Like this is my boundary. I don't need it to be out to everyone. These are the people I'm comfortable discussing with. And you were very clear about that from the start, yes. um, which I think is important. Sometimes when we're starting new things, we don't, we don't even know what our boundary should be. We just have so much fear and we focus on that instead of going, you know what, this is the boundaries I need and establishing them before with ourselves. It's like an agreement with ourselves. Like this is the boundary I need um, and setting that up. Yep. Cool. What do you think, what has changed the most in you that you've seen from when you started the challenge to now? Oh, my confidence for sure. Mm -hmm. um, just, you know, when you, when you start something new, obviously you're nervous and have your, you know, what you like the fear of failure, you, starting something new and, and giving up. Mm -hmm. And so that was my big thing. It was just being nervous getting out there, getting on social media, if I would even grow. Um, and, you know, I just told myself that I was going to stay consistent and not give up because I mean, if I've started, I've tried, you know, a few different things that like a stay at home uh, job or what I could do here and you start and then you kind of just, you give up. And I'm like, I'm, I told myself I'm not giving up on this. And 
it, I mean, it helped tremendously. And, you know, I, I'm here today, like I'm honored to talk to you today about it and my growth. And um, it's definitely just helped build my confidence overall. Yeah, definitely. And it, it, I think that has been the theme of the last like month of Wake Up Legendary is you got to take quitting off the table. Mm -hmm. You do. How, what's your advice for someone that still has it on? Like, how do you actually do it? It's so easy to say, I'll oh, just take quitting off the table. That's, it's not an option, but to actually sit down and every day remind yourself and, and that it's, that's not an option. So what, where do I need to put my focus is hard. How, what's your advice for someone in that right now? Well, and you know, I'm, I'm a normal person. I've, d I've done that before where you start and you just give up. It just wasn't working how you thought you're not growing as fast as you thought you didn't end up where you thought. And so for this one, I, it was probably the same time, like on Instagram where like motivational quotes keep popping up and I'm like, okay, so I'm now hearing all these and I'm starting something new. And I just told myself, there's no point in continuing to start something and then stop something. I'm never going to get anywhere. I'm never going to have my end goal of staying home with my kids and being, you know, financially free. So I, even when I had my doubts about this, like when I wasn't growing at the beginning or people weren't watching my reels, mm -hmm. I kept telling myself it's going to happen. Like I have to stay consistent. There is no point in giving up because I'm just going to go back to square one. So right. even on those, even on those harder days where, when I'm like, my video wasn't the, the best, I didn't get the views I wanted. I just kept being consistent. And I listened to, you know, fellow legendary marketers out there that were just like, you need to post reels consistently three times a day. You need to post your stories. You need to engage, even though you have nobody engaging with you. And so that was, that was the biggest thing of not quitting. And, and it, it yeah. paid off and it continues to pay off. And I mean, I still have my days that I'm like, I'm not growing as fast or I'm not having people, you know, as many people like view, but I just keep telling myself, I have to stay consistent. It, it's going to keep flowing. Yeah. There, there's, we, we call it the Valley of despair, pushing through, you know, everyone's starting at a new account for mm -hmm. the most part. You're all, everyone has a day one doesn't matter where you are right now or who you're watching out there on social media. They all had a day one with zero followers, every single person yep. and every single person had periods where no one was watching, but you still had to show up and do the work. Mm -hmm. And when and I started, I mean, I saw that too. And so many people posted about that and it's, I mean, at the beginning, you're skeptical still. You're like, I mean, yeah. you have now 600,000 followers, but it's possible. I mean, it just, you, you kick off and you just go and you just, you grow. So it. Right. Yeah. And release that, that weight we kind of put on ourselves, especially with that first video, like, okay, got to have the most perfect first video ever. I'm taking two weeks to plan it because I'm going to post it and I'm going to become a gazillionaire overnight. It's going to go viral and my whole life is going to change. And then I'll only have to post one video ever and I'll be done. It's kind of the pressure we put on ourselves and it's so unrealistic. Yes. It's so like, that's none of that's going to happen <laughs> at all. Yes. And after you post that first video, you know what, you're going to post another and another and another and another. And within two weeks, that first video is going to be so buried down there. It doesn't matter what was in it. It's it's more about just deciding you're going to show up every day. Absolutely. And you're going to serve your audience that you defined in your business plan is really what it's about in the beginning. Would you agree? What what were you, what was your main focus in those first that first month of posting video? Just to put content out there and you know, show that I'm, you know, here to deliver information. I mean, I, like you said, I was so nervous about my first few videos too. And now I look back at them, I'm like, those were terrible, but, okay. I mean, but they look, you think that they're better when you first post them. Yeah. Um, I mean, but still to this day, I, you critique your own videos, um, mm -hmm. but just being out there and, and explaining what legendary marketing is and that it is possible to do. And you can, be financially free. You can stay at home. You, this, this is a business model. Um, and 
just engaging with people that, you know, have questions about it or want to learn, uh, learn more about it. Yeah. Yeah. It's really about getting into a frame of mind where you're not selling, <laughs> yep. you're sharing. Absolutely. This is my experience. This is what I've learned. Let me help you. I can teach you this. I can show you that, or I can recommend this. Go check it out for yourself and see how you feel about it. Yes. It's really what it is. It's growing that trust with an audience to be able to have just online friends like you would in real life. And you have a little bit more knowledge than what they need. And you can help solve a problem for them that they're mm -hmm. looking for answers for. And that's what's huge. Yeah. Did you ever have a point where you just were like overwhelmed? Like I, I just, the overwhelm has come over. You're not sure what to do. Or did you always feel like this is what I'm going to do? I'm, I'm good. Like you always had control of it. Um, so I knew from the beginning that I wasn't going to start this and, um, not give it my all. Like I said, I, I, I just dove right in. So I knew I, I was going to post three times a day, my stories and engage, but it was around that, you know, a uh, month and a half to two month mark where it was kind of like crickets for me. And I know some people grow like pretty quickly and some people take a lo little longer to grow, but mm -hmm. it was that around that time where I was overwhelmed, where I'm like, is this going to happen? It, you know, is anything going to happen from this? And, you know, I did have a friend that I talked to um, and she was like, you just have to stay consistent. Like you just, just keep posting. And I listened to her and I kept posting and um, it, 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 I mean, it was just an overwhelming part and mm -hmm. it, it paid off. For not for not giving up and i know that i listen to so many people that say like around that times where people give up and that's not just here that's like in a lot of things that you try um so not giving up has i mean led me here and it's yeah dave once called it you know you can go on instagram and see the graveyard of accounts mm -hmm. you can see the point you can find accounts in any niche doesn't matter whatever they're, they're building of where they quit, where they gave up, where they were consistent. And then all of a sudden it went, there were no more videos where they just stopped. They're just these tombstones along the journey that you can find. And it really comes back to us deciding ourselves. I'm not going to let my account be an Instagram tombstone. Yes. It, Cause it, we have to release that. Everyone has to watch me. It's, it's almost like releasing the ego a little bit, which is hard, but you got to just keep showing up through it and it's going to take time and it's going to take work. And it's, that's the part that I want to make clear to everyone. That's not, it's simple, but it's not easy. Yeah. I mean, it's still, it's still hard work. You still have, it's still a grind. Mm -hmm. um, it just, you you can do it at your own pace and you can put as much or as little work into it as you as you want and but that's that's where your outcome is going to be so yeah yeah definitely um what what how how do you what's your favorite what really made a difference in a change for your content do you feel that started and really fired up your growth beyond just showing up every day were there changes that you made to your to your videos, to your content, what give us a little bit of the strategy behind what you did. Absolutely. Um, I started, you know, just watching everybody else's videos and posting more about myself and my family and a little bit about, you know, legendary and working from home. But I kept, you know, talking to other other marketers, other legendary marketers, and you know, gaining advice from them. Mm -hmm. um, about posting side hustles and remote jobs and about legendary. And I finally was like, you know what? I need to listen. Like I need to do that. And the, the moment I, I started posting side hustles and remote jobs and um, all about that. And then talking about legendary in that as well, that's mm -hmm. when it took off. Um, and then Posting. I mean, now I post conversion posts about you know my journey and um, and legendary, and it, mm -hmm. I still continue to grow. But it was it was listening to my peers about what works and what doesn't, and 
um, not letting what I thought I wanted to post overcome that. Mm. I a lot of people, including myself, see other people posting that are not at square, like at, you know, at the start level. I right. want to what what they're posting and it just doesn't work that way. You have to start from square one and mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it's, you know, you can't go and copy <laughs> or even model somebody that's on day 100, 275 of their business and what their strategy is. It won't work on a new account. It just won't work. And if that's the strategy any of us are applying to our own businesses and our own social media accounts and our content strategy, we're going to be sitting with very few views and followers for a really long time <laughs> that's and that's a hard pill to swallow and a lot of times i see oh it's you know it's been two months it must be the time of day that i'm posting it must there's so many excuses it must be these outside forces the algorithm changed on me um it's saturated the market must be saturated so i'm not getting views and this is where we're going to have a little tough love because it requires us to look back on ourselves and what we've been doing with our marketing shades. Don't be a bully to ourselves, but look at our past content of what do we need to actually connect with an audience from the start? What's going to create them to go, I want to follow her. I want to be her his online friend. Nobody's scrolling going, yes, I want to buy. They're not logging on to buy something. They're logging on to connect with someone. So we have to make content that builds connection, especially in that beginning stages. When you hear this, what comes up for you? Trust. Um, I was told, you know, I had my mentor throughout um, and he told me, you have to build trust in your audience or else nobody's going to watch you. Nobody's going to want to follow you. And he said, you know, you don't know what you don't know. So you have to, as I'm learning as well, starting from square one, um, I have to post content as I'm gaining my audience's trust. Mm -hmm. And that really clicked. And after I talked to him and I changed my content, that's when, you know, it was just a, a breath of fresh air. And then I did have, you know, my views started going up, my follower count started going up. And then mm -hmm. I did have my viral post and then it just kept going. And so I just kept staying consistent mm -hmm. and listening and listening to what he said. I mean, it, it helped tremendously. It just, you have to get out of your own head and I mean, I guess not be stubborn for lack of a better word and just mm -hmm. you know, be there for your audience and, and explain what you're doing. Yeah. And it's, it's, God, I love that. You, you can't be stubborn. You, it just can't be, we're all new. So why, when it comes to content, are some of us going, this is exactly, this is all I'm going to do. I don't want to do anything else. I'm not going to be open to feedback. I'm not going to be open to try different things, but it's a brand new account and it's a brand new business you're building and you have to, and it's marketing and marketing is all about testing. And it's, it's, social media, which is meant to be social. So we've got to test different ways to build those connections and to build that trust. And it has to be to build the trust for them to follow you. And no one's following you to buy something. They're following you because they connect with you as a person. They love your personality. They love the messaging. They love the way you edit videos. They think you're funny. There's all those different things that come into play over time, but they can't see that unless you're consistently showing up, unless you're consistently showing that variety in content. Um, and when you, the poster just doesn't care about the result and cares more about, I'm just, I'm going to enjoy and put really positive energy into what I'm doing and what I'm putting out and making sure that I'm serving in some form or fashion. Absolutely. And it took me, a, a, you know, I didn't want, you go in and you're, I think I said this already, like you want to do what so-and-so is doing, who's already way beyond you starting. 
it, you're just not authentic. You have to be yourself. You have to, and it took me a while. I'm like, what does that even mean to me, yeah. like to myself? But mm -hmm. there are so many people that have their own way of posting what they post. And you, I mean, it's not going to be authentic if you copy what they're posting. Right. And, you know, trying to be them. So people are going to engage with you more if you're just yourself. Yeah. We, we just can't be actors and actresses. I can't pretend like if I love Susie's account over on TikTok, I can't go copy Susie. I can't be Susie. I can try really hard and I've seen it where people pretend to go be Susie, <laughs> but they're not authentic in their content. And Susie's followers follow Susie because of Susie. They don't want to follow copycatters or pretend Susie's. Absolutely. Right. We, we've got to, we have to have enough self-worth, maybe self-confidence that we're pretty cool, amazing, weird, awesomely person type person. It doesn't matter who we are. Everything that builds us up makes us unique. Um, and we've got to be willing to show that. And I think that's what's the hardest is if I put myself out there and I show my quirky personality, will I get a response back? Mm -hmm. And I, I believe over time, as you keep showing up authentically, you will. As long as you're enjoying it and you're not like hiding and, you know, in the dark and really sad. But if you're pumped and excited and you have that energy and you're about wanting to find online friends and putting that content out there um, and that energy into your videos, I believe they will come. Would you agree with that? Absolutely. Yes. I mean, just showing, being confident in what you're saying and what you're doing. And mm -hmm. I look back at my other videos and I was like, I don't even know what I was saying. So it's just building your confidence. And like you said, bringing that energy, your energy, not somebody else's, not trying. Mm -hmm. I mean, I could try to do dance videos all day and it's just not going to be great. So, I mean, I just found what I like to do and mm -hmm. what my audience likes. And I just, you know, I deliver that and I'm hoping that people love it. And, um, I, you know, I'm different from other marketers, but, you know, we're all here to deliver a message and to, to educate. Yeah, definitely. And it, it's, and it feels good. It's easier and you're showing, you can wake up and go, ah, it's really easy to make multiple videos a day because you're not trying to be something that you're not. Yes. hundred percent. I agree with that. Yeah. It's so much easier. Just be yourself. Yep. <laughs> it just is. <laughs> be honest, be yourself, be authentic because we're not doing this for a week, guys. We're building a business that should be around for years. That's really the goal. So what, what, what is, what do you want your brand to be five years from now? What are you going to be able to show up a year from now and still be excited about? That's how you help find what audience you want to talk to, what niche you want to be in. Cause you've got to look at those things of what do I want to do a year from now with my business? What do I want to do two years, three years, four years from now? I think sometimes people get in a challenge and they're like, okay, 15 days, 30 days, I'm going to have a business. It's done. It's going to be amazing. I'll be over with it in 60 days and everything's going to be phenomenal. And it's like, well, no, no, no. What do you want to do for the next two years? You know, and sometimes I see other marketers going down the path of negative marketing where they're all about the drama and they hate this or they can't stand that. And it's like, man, you're drawing in other negative people and followers that love negative drama. Is that what you, do you want to show up to that audience a year from now? Cause once you're pulling in negative followers, you got to keep being the drama. <laughs> Is that fun? Is that the business you want a year from now, two years from now? Probably not. It's not really a great strategy to sell whatever it is you're selling, <laughs> but you know, so it, it really comes back to putting in really positive, authentic energy into it. And I think you do that really well with your videos and you show that. So it, everyone definitely, I mean, give Brittany a follow, go check out how she puts her energy out, how she's authentic. It's not about copying Brittany, but it's seeing how she lets her personality shine through is really what it's about is modeling strategies, but allowing yourself to come through and that's okay. And it's a good thing.
which is cool. Yeah. Um, what comes up for you as, as I share that piece? Is it, it, is it scary for you to show yourself, be authentic online and share your story? Oh, absolutely. I mean, I'm, I'm like oh, anybody else. I mean, I get nervous or, you know, what people are going to think of me. And as I'm growing, more people watch me. So, I mean, that's nerve wracking, but I stay true to who I am. And, you know, I, I have a family, I'm doing this for my family so I could stay home, but also to help other people do the same thing. There's so many people out there that would love the ability to stay home with their family or, you know, work from home for any, you know, reason, but I, it is nerve wracking, but I, like you said, it's just easier to stay true to yourself and who I am, share my story and, you know, connect with people that have that same, you know, that are similar to me, but also that just want to learn how I, you know, how I grew or, or how to work from home or, you know, how to be a legendary marketer. So, um, yeah. Yeah. I love it. So I see you're on TikTok and Instagram. How did you choose where you were going to start? Did you start with just one? Did you go, I'm going to go everywhere? How did, what was that process for you? So I only had an Instagram. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I shared a Facebook for like marketplace. That's about it. Um, mm -hmm. But I only had an Instagram and I had never done TikTok in my life. Never. Um, so I started with that and then I'm like, I should probably get a TikTok. So that took some, I mean, there's obviously a learning curve to all of this. Right. Um, aside from just posting on social media, learning something new and then learning social media. So I now, I mean, I have Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and that's where I share my, my videos. Um, but Instagram is still where I, you know, my main, my main focus. Um, and just, I mean, growing, all, they, they all grow when you, I mean, just staying consistent with all of them. I think that mm -hmm. you can post on on multiple different platforms. I mean, you have Pinterest, um, Twitter, it's whatever you choose. Those are just my preferences. Yeah. And that's really what it comes down to. I've seen some people like, where do I start? Which one do I have? Do I have to have a TikTok? Do I have to have an Instagram? No, you don't have to. It's your business. You can start. I recommend starting on the platform you're most comfortable with and then adding to them, testing other platforms, putting them out there, seeing how you feel about them. There is no one platform that's going to take off for every single person. It's different for every person. Absolutely. Because our personalities are different. Who we attract is different. Um, and it just, you never know where it's going to take off first. So if you can handle it, absolutely post on multiple platforms. Um, put your focus into one to start with and then add to them would be my advice. And I love that you you started on one and then you, you know, now you're on multiple platforms, but you did it at what you preferred. And that's really what it is. It's not us saying, all right, you have to start on TikTok first. That's the, your only option. Um, that's the mindset of looking as that's an employee mindset, looking for your checklist of your boss to tell you that this is what you have to do and only that. And that's really hard for some of us to embrace because we're starting a business. And we create our own checklist and it's really scary. Yes, you need to learn certain skills, but there's not a order of it has to be this, it has to be Facebook or it has to be Instagram. If you love Pinterest, go for it. If you love YouTube, go for it. If you love Instagram, start there. Um, it, it's really about designing what gets you a fired up to be able to post consistently and to keep posting consistently without that overwhelm. And I was just about to say the overwhelming part. I mean, I, I heard from so many people like, don't do too much. I mean, you, you hear so many people like you have to post on TikTok, on Instagram, on Facebook, on every platform, and then you're just going to get overwhelmed and discouraged. So, I mean, that's why I chose, it was already new to me. So I'm like, you know, let me just stick with Instagram and then slowly add as I feel comfortable doing. And I think, I, I mean, I would recommend that to anybody because you're just, yeah. you're going to get overwhelmed and then you're going to get discouraged. Right. And then you quit. Suddenly quitting is back on the table. Yes. Suddenly you've gone three days and nothing's been posted. 
because you had a day where you're like, oh my gosh, I'm trying to be on four different social media accounts and I'm supposed to have three videos and I only have one and I don't like it and I didn't post anything and now you've skipped three days. Yeah, that, that's really what that process looks like. And somebody I'm sure in the comments going, crap, she's talking about me. <laughs> Absolutely, I bet. <laughs> I did that, <laughs> you know, it, it, it's back off to, to one, one, one platform, one video a day. If that's what you can do, that's what your schedule can handle. That's what your mindset can handle. Do that. Whatever you can do consistently. And when I say consistently, what can you do where you take real action, which is posting a video at the very minimum every single day? And is that one video? Is it two videos? Is it three videos? Is it on one platform? Is it on two platforms? Is it on three platforms? You have to find what works best for you and give yourself that grace of this is what I need to do because you always can change it. You always can up it as you gain that confidence. I love that you say that because I, I do say, you know, post, and this is just what I followed was posting the three a day and mm -hmm. stories but that might not be realistic for a mom that is a full-time nurse, you know, taking care right. of their babies or a dad, you know, that's blue collar. It, it might not be realistic. So like you said, just pick one that you can, you know, that you can be consistent and show up every day for your audience. Mm -hmm. And then you can always grow. I mean, because when I first started, people were like, you can post four or five times a day. And I'm like, that's a lot, that's Which, a lot. but some people might be able to do it. So mm -hmm. you have to find your sweet spot, like you said, and just yeah. go and it's going to be different for everyone. And some not only have like a nine to five, they're like a seven to eight. <laughs> like their, their schedule's crazy and they're super overwhelmed, but they, they're looking for a change. They want to get this going and they're not sure how to do it. And that's where you got to batch content, people. If you know on a Sunday afternoon, you have three hours that you can commit consistently to sitting down and making five to 10 videos, do that. And then you just post. All you got to do is log in on a break and post one of those videos each day so that you are still showing up consistently, even though you filmed them all on Sunday. Just put them all in your drafts <laughs> and be there. There's always a way. You just have to be willing to look for what works best with your schedule and how do I figure it out? Everything is figure outable no matter what is coming at you in life. Um, there's always a way. I love that Terrence says, yeah, he's closer to a seven to eight <laughs> than a nine to five. Exactly. Or post, maybe your free time is in the evening or you have an hour lunch break, but you've got to commit that time to this instead of just, you know, logging in and scrolling. You could be making a video instead. Most videos aren't that long. Grab a bunch of B-roll from somewhere, from an old video, throw some text on and get it posted, right? Um, but take that time on a weekend where you have that extra time to devote and be thoughtful about content and thoughtful about your strategy and thoughtful about your messaging to the audience you're trying to reach and plan it out if that's what you need to do to get through the week. Have you ever batched content or do you do it every day? Okay, well, it's funny that you say that because I need to batch more content. Mm -hmm. um, but so I'm getting better at doing that, um, which is, you know, in my actual life, I'm so OCD and I would have everything ready to go. Um, and then when I started, I was just doing videos as they came. Um, but my life is crazy also. I mean, I have three littles running around. So it's, you know, doing multiple videos and then just like you said, having them ready to go. And even if you're doing the videos and then later adding the text and later finding the audio, it just makes it that much easier and then less excuses to not be able to do it. Yeah. So, I mean, I recommend that for, for anybody that, that can has the ability to do that, especially the, the people that are working or have just no time just so that it's ready to go. And you can reuse videos of yourself, like you and like B-roll and, and whatnot, and just change the text and the message, but just having them ready to go is, is I highly recommend it. Yeah, definitely. Or just have a B-roll library. 
take a weekend and just film everything that you're doing randomly. Have your kids film you, film your kids if you, you want them, you know, they can even be further away if you don't want to show their faces. Film yourself at the grocery store, at the park, driving in the car, hanging out in the backyard, doing laundry. Just create a whole library in your phone of, of just a boatload of B-roll that you can slap on captions at any time. It's just ready and waiting and sitting there. And people um, love to see what you do in your life. So, I mean, yeah. like you said, in the car, what you're doing, people love that or talking or showing your face or some people don't want to ever show their face. And that's, you can be successful with that as well. You can get a message across. So just finding what is comfortable for you and then just staying consistent with that. Yeah, definitely. So I want to address Kyler. He's, he's a little confused. We just, we just need to get people to sign up for things. <laughs> it's like, well, you got to find your audience. You need to find what niche do you want to be in the outdoor niche? Do you want to be in auto niche? Do you want to be in relationships and dating, or do you want to be in health and fitness and then finding products, courses, anything within that, that your audience it would help solve a problem for them. They're looking, they're going online and they're looking to solve a problem. They're looking for advice, for help, and you are making recommendations for them and you make that commission. That's what this is. That's what every business is online. Every single business. I don't care what it is. Walmart online, Nike online, <laughs> Target online. At some point you opted in to a funnel. You gave an email address for a 30% off coupon. You probably have this week. All of us have at some point. That is your opt-in to a lead magnet that we teach you on day three of the challenge. And then you go into the next step where a lot of times most of the ads we click are affiliate ads. And we don't even realize it because they have that congruency of colors and they make it really easy and safe as somebody goes through that journey. And if they purchase something that you have now recommended, yes, you then make a commission off of it without having to deal with the overhead of employees creating the product, refunds, customer support, and all of that. And that is affiliate marketing in a nutshell. Did I miss anything, <laughs> Brittany? About it, I mean, I think when you, after taking the 15 day course, or I mean, even day one, it opens your eyes to, oh my gosh, I think I do this all the time. Like you said, I have so right. many emails that come through or, you know, and it's just like legendary just teaches you how to create your own and how to make mm -hmm. that business and how, you know, 86% of brands have affiliate marketing mar programs that you mm -hmm. probably didn't even know on the daily. So it's just learning that and how to utilize that to share with people and, you know, picking the niche that you are passionate about and products that you want to promote and that you love and trust and just, mm -hmm sharing that. Yeah. And they're just, I like, I, for example, I'm a Jeep girl. I have a Jeep. So of course I am a psycho Jeep follower on Instagram and there are tons of accounts where everybody's promoting different Jeep, you know, parts and products and they have all of their different affiliate links and you can join this Jeep newsletter and it's all about Jeeps. And they're all making commissions off of everything that that's what it is, but they're not the actual manufacturer of the lights or <laughs> whatever else they're at the tires or rims that they're adding to their Jeep, but they're recommending them and they're going to get a commission off of them. And they make a ton of content with their Jeep. That's showcasing all of these items, how cool their Jeep looks. And that's what it is. And they don't even realize it. Some people you don't even realize who you're following. Go look at their link. What are they promoting? They're promoting something. No one's online with a huge following doing nothing. No, I 100. I I have a Jeep also, so I I love those too. No, but <laughs> after I took the course, I look back and I'm like I okay, like every CrossFitter that I follow, they do the same thing. They're just promoting and they're getting a commission too. So when people think it's a scam, it's it's not a scam. Like it's every, you know, you promote somebody's product and they, and they give you a commission for it. So right. just finding what you're passionate about and then, and that energy will spew out. And so not just picking something that you think is going to work, something that you actually love and people, it'll just radiate to people. Yeah. 
Definitely. Ah, we're ending there. Kyler, go watch that back that part. You promote whatever you want to promote to the audience that you enjoy and love and that you want to build. Go find the niche that you love. Go find products within that niche that you love. And that's what you do. Um, and the 15 day challenge will walk you through those introductory steps of how to do that um, and go for it, which is pretty cool and see how you feel about it. Well, this has been an amazing chat. I hope you don't mind. You can hear my little lab puppy starting to cry behind me. <laughs> so if you're wondering what the background noise is, it is a lab puppy who is should be named Goliath because he's huge, but he is a baby and he's crying. But anyways, this has been a phenomenal, just real chat. Brittany, I've loved it. Um, I loved everything that you shared. I hope everyone, if you came in late, go rewatch from the start um, and you have to come back. I want updates for Absolutely. sure. Um, Cause I'm pumped for you. I love, you're just at the very start of this and it's your next year is going to freaking be amazing. And I'm so stoked for you. Thank you. Um, I appreciate you having me on and it was great talking to you as well. Yeah, definitely. And we'll have to have you back on and you can meet Dave as well, which is always a fun conversation. So thank you. Thank you so much. Have a good one. You too. All right. That was amazing. I love Brittany already. Um, go give her a follow on TikTok and Instagram. Find her at Profitable nest all connected one word and i did see already somebody went and followed her and then she got a friend request from a fake profitable nest account so those are out there always be aware of who you're following make sure you're following the actual account um, if somebody is reaching out to you in the dms and saying that they are someone they are not that person no one <laughs> No, really quality marketers do not cold DM, which means send you the message first. Okay. So most likely that is a fake account and you need to go unfollow the fake account that has DM'd you. Make sure you are following accurate accounts that actually go to their real funnel, their real website and all of that good stuff. Happy Friday, everyone. We are back on Monday for another episode. Dave will be back as well. As always, stay legendary. Peace.